dude, I'll, I'll bet. I'll bet a hundred bucks right now. I just found his hideout. Dang, really? Yeah. Right. If, if I was a betting man, this would be it, huh? I, I would bet this is where he lives. I'm looking at it now, dude. I mean, it's like. All right, we'll go get to knocking on doors then. Or are you yeah. going to wait till like five or six? No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a see if anybody's home now. Well, you start now. Me. Yeah. 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 Start now. He's got to be here, dude. He's got to be. Dude, that's awesome. So, yeah, I agree. I'm going to start knocking. I'll let you know how it goes. All right, good luck. See let you. me know. Bye. <sighs> kind of nervous about this. I think I knocked on probably 15 doors a day. Um, kind of an off day for getting permission. Some days, some days are better than others, but I did wind up with what could be a money spot. It's a privet bottom that goes back to a creek. And this is what we're dealing with. That right there is kudzu. And kudzu is exactly what I like to key in on this time of year. Uh, these bucks just, they get in it, they can disappear in it, they got all they could possibly eat. And uh, it's got food, it's got water, and I'm pretty much butt butting up to this kudzu patch. So, I think I'm in the money spot. I'm gonna branch out now um, to some different areas and um, kinda cover some ground, see if I can't learn a little more about what this deer's doing. Those people, I was really, <laughs> I was really unsure. I don't even know if you could see me in the frame. I was really unsure when she answered the door, she was, or when she walked up to me, she was like, I thought you were, I thought you were Amazon. And I kind of went into my spiel and she's like, let me get my husband. Uh, I gave him the spiel and they were like, love it. That's incredible. I actually heard them when they were walking in, they were like, bow hunting, huh? That's amazing. They also said that, and I saw kudzu here, which is good for the summertime. They were like, yeah, we see this pretty big buck. Like, you know, we, we, I think we saw him. He must've been the same one from last year, but you know, he's a pretty good size one. So, um, <laughs> I'm gonna go stick a camera out and they're like park right here in the cul-de-sac. And, uh, so sticking a camera out. This is like the only open area I've found on the whole property. The rest of it is just crazy, crazy thick privet. And it never ceases to amaze me that until you get in the woods in here, there's so many places for these deer to just completely hide. I'm wrapping the day up. I'm worn out. I've talked to a lot of houses. So we will let all this stuff soak. I'm gonna be back over here tomorrow after work to knock on some more doors. I'm gonna pull some more cameras and just bombard this area. That is the program that I get on when I locate a deer to go after is that I basically not lose focus. I basically just pull all my resources, forget about all the other deer that I'm getting pictures of, pull all my resources to focus 100% on this deer. You gotta be all in. You gotta do as much homework as you possibly can. It's high risk, high reward. Your deer could get hit by a car. I say your deer, it's not your deer, but a, the deer you're pursuing could get hit by a car. Another hunter could take him. Uh, there's a lot of things that could happen. So if you're focused on that one deer, it's a high, high gamble. But when you do a ton of homework, you put in all your efforts into one deer and learning that one deer's behaviors and habits, it can really pay off. So let me get the heck out of this place and uh, be back at it tomorrow. The good news is for the last two weeks, I have been absolutely bombarding this area. 
Uh, it's about a two square mile area for permission and I've gotten, I don't know how many doors I've knocked on, it's been a lot. Um, but I have gotten 12 places I can hunt and I'm running about seven cell cams over there and rotating them around. And the good news, it is September 6th and as of last night, I got my first pictures of this deer. He's a, he's a giant. He's an absolute freaking giant. I mean, just like points and points and points. I've been looking for this deer for months. It's been all spring and all summer. Trying to follow a lead of our buddy that saw this deer run across a golf course last year. And months of, of searching, finally, finally, finally found the deer. So that's the good news. The bad news is that in the searching process of knocking on doors, I actually found about five or six other hunters that are in the area. I'm sure they know of this deer, may have been hunting him for years, I don't know, but um, that's suburban hunting. There's a lot of competition. There's more people hunting Atlanta uh, than ever before. So it's just part of the, part of the game now. Um, so I'm gonna give it all I got and hopefully it falls my way. And here comes the great news. The great news is for y'all. So Hoyt sent Drew and I a Helix and a RX-3 bow this year to shoot both of them and see which one we liked. Drew actually chose the Helix. I shot the RX-3 and like the RX-3. And so now I've got an extra Hoyt RX-3, or sorry, an extra Hoyt Helix bow, literally brand new. I have never shot this thing. It's brand new out of the package and it's gonna come fully loaded. I think it's gonna be like a $1,600 setup. And I was like, what do I do with it? What, you know, do I uh, keep it? Do I sell it? And I'm actually gonna give it to you guys. And so here's how this is gonna work. We're doing our first subscriber giveaway. If it goes down for this deer, I'm gonna give that bow away um, two weeks after this episode drops. And here's how you enter to win. All you gotta do is subscribe to our channel. If you haven't done it already, take a second and click that subscribe button. The second thing you have to do is leave a comment on this video of your Instagram at whatever your name is on Instagram. I don't care how many times you enter. You can comment as many times as you want. And on our Instagram live, two weeks after this episode airs, we're gonna choose a random winner from the comment section. We're gonna scroll through the comments of the video and choose someone random. So I finally got my picture. So I've gotten at least one spot where I've confirmed the deer's kind of hanging out. Now I'm gonna go in and branch out from that one little section and really start to put the pieces of, of the puzzle together on this deer and try and figure out where his home turf is, where his summer area is, his bedroom, um, and see if I can't get it done. So that's my plan, I'm gonna stay after it. And uh, hopefully it goes down with this deer because you guys will be getting a new bow. What's up? What's up, dude? Uh, <laughs> so how big do you think he is? <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> don't even, don't even, like, I'm trying not to think about it. I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it doesn't even matter. I guess it's just, it's, it's. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to Drew earlier and sent him the, the head on picture <laughs> and the side picture. And it was the first time he'd seen it. And he was like, holy crap. <laughs> so uh, awesome. he, he's like, dude, I think that deer's like ballpark 210. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> you do? Yeah, I mean, I don't. Oh my I don't, gosh! When I, I when I first saw the picture, I was like, you know, eighty, and it's like as I'm scrolling through pictures, I'm like, okay, ninety, and then I got to the head <laughs> on one, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> so I uh, I don't know, man. I, I honestly like this. The score doesn't matter. I'm not I'm not hunting that deer. You know, if I mean score. <laughs> Score helps, but like, I like the story of finding a mature deer that is special, and he's definitely special. So whether he's 180 or whether he's 200, like it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm locked in on him. What's what's gonna be tough is I have no history with this deer, and that's like been the biggest advantage in years past. It's like having years of history. You can kind of be like, okay, you can head him off here, you can head him off here, but like, this is fresh. I don't know a thing about this deer and so that's why i've got like eight cell cams over there now scatter plotted all over the place to try and learn where he's gonna go oh talk about last minute 
talk about last minute. It is Friday, September 13th. The day before bow season in Georgia. And here I am hanging my stands. This is where he showed up yesterday at 3.30 in the afternoon. So I think I'm gonna get it in this tree. It's got a bunch of ivy on it. I've got it all the way up. I got one more ladder to put up and I'm gonna bury up in that bush of ivy up there. And I think that's the best tree to get in. My, honestly, my tree selection is pretty limited in here. All right, got the stand hung. It's actually pretty ideal, I think. I'm not as high, honestly, as I wanna be, but I think this is pretty good. I think it'll work. This is my shot. There's a big trail that comes right through here and then comes right up in there, big creek. All these uh, hardwoods are dropping acorns. And he's just kind of cruising up and down the creek. I put in a mock scrape down there. Setup number one complete. Got to get a camera arm hung and uh, move on out of here. All right, my spot number two. Changed clothes. Had stung up the last ones, dripping in sweat. Got all my stuff here. And I think this tree right here it's gonna be the deal. I got a scrape right there. Basically long, really thick, kind of just finger of woods where he's kind of going back and forth between other blocks of woods. This is just a big trail that kind of goes over this hill. It's pretty much covered in ivy. And I've gotten good pictures of him here. Uh, there's actually some rubs back in here that I've seen too. So I think this is gonna be a pretty good spot between the two. I think we'll have a pretty good spread on how to attack this deer, but First things first, let me get this stand up. All right there. Got my stand up. Two spots, ready to hunt this deer. Could potentially be the biggest deer of my life. Anyways, I'm gonna get out of here. I need to let all this kind of die down for a couple of days. I probably won't even hunt opening day. Just to try and let all this air out. Now, I know that deer are used to people doing yard work and stuff, but they're not really used to people getting in their territory. So me blowing this area out back in here where people don't normally go is gonna affect him. So I'm gonna back out for a few days. Let, all, let everything calm down in here. and. Let the cameras tell me where to be. It's September 18th. And I've kind of taken you all along the journey of permission after permission after permission. I feel like I've spent the last month over here every day, almost every day getting new spots, putting cameras in new areas, rotating cameras, trying everything I can do to pattern this deer. And I thought I had somewhat of a pattern figured out for him. I still haven't figured it out, but he's been gone the last six days. And usually early this time of year, they've got their summer hideouts and then they'll leave uh, and kind of start going to their rut areas. And so he was gone for six days and I thought he had left. So I was frantically trying to find where he was going. And then boom, last night, he showed up at midnight, came and fed around at like three different times and was here at like 7.05 this morning in shooting light. I just climbed up in my stand as soon as I was getting the camera arm ready, getting everything set up. And the dude that's giving me permission is like, hey Lee, can you come help me real quick? He's like, cleaning out his pool, probably 20 yards behind me. He's like, I got this bag of, uh, of chlorine. I can't get it open. I was like, yeah, man, I'll be right down. So I climbed down the tree, went over there, helped him get the chlorine ready, threw a couple tablets in, came back up. Now we're in the tree after a 200 inch deer. That's suburban as it gets right there, but um, some, sometimes that's where these deer hide. 
in the most overlooked places and this is a place that I've overlooked for a while. The morning of September 19th, um, I hunted last night, didn't see anything. Uh, I got up this morning to go hunt and check my covert app and he actually showed up last night twice. He showed up one once at midnight, uh, hit the mock scrape that I put in there. I think he's starting to get pretty territorial, defensive of that scrape in there, which is good. Um, and then again, he came back at 5.30 and actually fed around for a few minutes. Um, so I'm hoping that he's bedded really close. So I'm, I pulled up to my spot right now, I'm gonna slip in and try and get in as quiet as I possibly can because the area I'm in is tight and if he's bedded, he, bedded around me he could be better close I really don't want to bump him but um, for all I know he could be two miles away but I'm gonna slip in this morning and uh, see what happens There's no way that that just happened. <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <sighs> I, th I think I just shot the biggest deer of my life. 13 years of this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I have never been this happy in my life, I don't think, I swear. <laughs> the best part, I hadn't even told Jay, Drew, nobody. Nobody knows yet, but we're about to let him know. Um, I'm going to give that deer plenty of time. I drilled him though, and I, I'm almost 99% sure that I heard him crash. Um, it might have been on the neighbor's lot, so I might have to get permission to go back there. Uh, I'm gonna go scope it out, but um, I'm gonna get in the truck and call call Jay or text somebody. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta let my boys know. Dude, you, did, did you kill him for real? Sm like Jay, you'd be so proud. Oh my gosh, Smoked. I can't believe it. The very first sit. Second sit. I sat last night, sat this second, morning. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, second sit. Yep. I've, I've, dude, I've never killed an early season deer in my life. Ever. Oh my gosh. And I think it's the, I think it's the biggest deer of my life, dude. All right. Uh, you, so you I'm coming. So what I'm asking is, are you busy? <laughs> <laughs> no, not now. I was. Uh, All my customers are about to get a phone call, man. I got a bug. <laughs> I'm telling you, Jay, he walked in. And I about had a like straight up panic attack. Like, oh my dude, I've, gosh. I've never shook like this in my life. I'm serious. Oh my gosh. To have it happen, man, I, to, on, on potentially another 200 inch deer, it's just such a rare phenomenon. And for it to happen again, I just feel, yeah. I don't know, man. Well, and it's Blessed. also, see, see how our season has been this year versus last versus year. Versus last year. Oh, yeah. 
That's and, what I was telling and, and what our focus has been on, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, our, our family, our faith, um, and putting putting that first. No doubt. Um, we've. I feel like we've all been in such a different place this year, and it's amazing. And I just shot my first early season deer ever. <laughs> ever. So freaking awesome. Oh, this is gonna be good. He's he's got the quarter to you, just a little. Just a hair, yep, but, but dude, I mean, yeah. Funk. Oh, blew through him too. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my God. Blood, <laughs> Tell me that deer's not dead. <laughs> oh yeah, he's toast. <sighs> all right, that's all we get. Let's go track him. Uh, yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Are you nervous? Yeah, I'm nervous. You should really be nervous now. This is the house, and there's cars there, which maybe someone's home. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, but there's that's a bunch of cars. That's the house that I think he might be on. That looks like a good house. But let's. I think nice what I want to. Nice people. Yeah, the guy's super cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna back the truck up, and okay. then I'm. Let's go look at the arrow, and then if we need to, I'm gonna go to that house. We'll watch property lines, and then I'll knock on that house if, okay. I, if we need to. Yeah. Do these people know? Know what? No, you shot one. Yeah. Okay, cool. I told the guy I loved him this morning. He was on his back deck. Like he heard, he heard <laughs> the shot yeah. and everything. He was on his back deck, gosh. like working on his phone. He heard a shot, and I go, hey, I just smoked one. He's like, oh, cool. Cool, man. <laughs> That's <laughs> nice, bro. That's so awesome. <laughs> and I like walked out, and I was like, dude, I, I was like, I don't think you'd really realize like what just happened. I was like, I've been doing this a long time, and I think I just shot the biggest deer of my life. I was like, I, I, I was like, thank you, man. I was like, I freaking love you. He's like, oh. Okay. Weird <laughs> Whatever. Weird man. Weird yeah. dude. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. Alright. Alright, you ready? Let's let's follow blood, and I'm gonna keep up my eye on the Ozonix. Yeah. Or not Ozonix. Onyx. Yeah. Oh, look at that, dude. You can see it good on that ivy. We're getting pretty close to the line. Um, right. we're, oh, yeah. uh, we're on it. Okay. I need to go talk so, to the neighbor. Let's go talk to them. But he's headed. Yeah, I need to go talk to that neighbor. All right. Headed to the neighbor's house. I got to get permission because this deer has crossed their line. So hopefully this goes well. The most nerve wracking part, the whole ordeal. Hold on. All right, so let's go next door. Yeah, they're not home. Or, or they're home and they're not answering. I'm, I'm uh, uh, friends with your next door neighbor. Before setting foot on your property, I want to make sure that we can go ahead and retrieve it. Okay, awesome. It should just take us a minute. Okay. Oh man, that was a debacle. So the guy, lit, the guy's here, but he wasn't answering his phone or his uh, door. So we looked up on our secret little app, a bunch of phone numbers. I called three of them, and the last one was the the phone number so he said he's gonna walk outside the best news ever though he's like yeah go back there that's fine Horn, horn. i mean dumping yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, he's a giant! Dude. Oh my god, he's a freaking giant! Bigger than I thought. Oh my god! Holy shit. Holy shit. Oh, oh my god. Good lord. Oh my god, he did. Freaking smoked him. Hey, he didn't run. 50? Maybe 50 yards? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, man. This is Smoke so special. Smoke City. Smoke City. 
so freaking special, man. Compared to last year, man, last year was so rough. Just from us, I honestly, if we're being honest, we were putting ourselves first. 100%. Would you Would you guys agree with that? Yep. And that's straight up and against John 330 right there. We were putting ourselves first, and God, dude, he made a way for us last year, and yep. he made a statement, and this year has been totally different for us. I know that I'm on a mountain right now, and it's easy to, to be in such a good place and praise God on a mountain, but, man, I know that there's valleys coming, and, but it makes you sure to appreciate moments like this, and I cannot take the credit for it. It's got to go to God, because this is just, this doesn't happen, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm blown away. Doesn't happen. God, man. I, I can't believe it. And I feel so not worthy of what he's blessed me with. I know. But, I understand the feeling. But, man, this is awesome. Thank you, Lord. And I'm really thankful that he put you guys in my life. I hate Drew's not here. Drew is off the grid, no service. Yeah. He has no idea what's going on. Doesn't he have a clue? No clue. Yeah. <laughs> Help but I'm really out. thankful that we have the brotherhood that we have, and it makes these moments that much sweeter. My homeowner's yelling at me. <laughs> What's up? Oh, this is even found. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he got him. <laughs> oh.